Welcome back, fellow gamers, to episode two of my Ikuro playthrough on uh, Extremely Difficult. First of all, thanks for the great comments. It's always good to learn stuff. I don't know everything about the game, and I'll always respond to you when I can. So there were some great comments, uh, great discussion. So that's all good. So please keep it coming. I really enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it too. And like I always say, I don't know everything, and my play styles are rather... I really kind of play the same way every time, so this is going to be a real good challenge for me. I'm not used to playing, uh, or at least if I play as a warmonger, as a pacifist nation, it's going to be very difficult for me, but I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks for coming along for the ride. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to put up these messages that I skipped through when I was on eight times speed last time, and just to catch you up to date, the goal for episode one was I wanted to grab one local independent colony and make it my own, which I did. So that's Balerion, and it's a great uh, planet. It has a, uh, if we look over here, has a quality of 55. So the Akdarians are plus 40 suitability. That's excellent. And it's got a very large diameter, 6248, which means it's going to hold more than twice as many or roughly twice as many people as my home which is great. So this is going to be a big money-making colony. Not initially, uh, but eventually it will. The thing I wanted to talk about was the messages that I skipped. So the pirates that we encountered were part of the unique uh, storyline here. So I'm just going to put them up on the screen here so you can see uh, this Harmonious Void pirates. The, I think they were the, I believe they were the first pirates we met. They really made us uh, make a choice. And they said, if you look through here, you can read it on your own. But basically they're saying... We hate the Dayut, which are these this independent here on Keratos. And you've got to choose between us and them. Now, because it was on 8 speed and I let it go, I really didn't have much of a choice. Uh, it just flew by. I'm not even sure I did have a choice. But regardless, they I, I obviously opted for peace. That is my uh, race's nature here. So if you go over here to relations, and if I look at pirate relations here, you'll see that when I click on Harmonious Void, there's something here that says, you declared a war of mercy. So again, I guess because we chose peace and we wouldn't turn on our neighbors, they didn't like that, and so now we're at war with them. I'm not even sure that could have been avoided. Feel free to leave notes in the comments. But here it is, right? So I'm at war with one pirate, and that really makes it difficult for me a little bit in the beginning. I always try to make peace with the pirates. It works out so well. Um, oh, by the way, a good question. Somebody came up about this because I did comment how quickly this other pirate went to a non-aggression. And I know that they have changed that. So I will cover this as we go along. I think I covered it. I know I covered it in my design uh, video. But there's been a bunch of changes since Aurora. And, and again, it didn't happen overnight. But in the last three months, there's been a lot of changes. And one of them is, yes, the pirates eventually go to a non-aggression treaty much faster than they used to, but the speed that this one happened to seemed faster than I was used to. But it might have been the eight-time speed, and I just didn't notice. Uh, so I am aware of that, I'm regar uh, but regardless, I think it still happened faster than I think it should have. Uh, and that, of course, that's not going to happen with these guys, so I'm going to be constantly at war with them. But again, I do recommend when you play, try to make peace with all the pirates. It's worth it. They will, relatively speaking, quickly get to a protection agreement. I'm sorry, a non-aggression agreement, and that's going to be good for you because it won't cost anything anymore. And then eventually, if you do some other things, I, I, I don't want to spoil too much, but if you fight some certain creatures later on, they will join you, right? So there's a lot of good things to having pirates uh, not as enemies. All right, but enough about them. So we're going to live with these facts that these pirates just don't like us, and that's okay. Uh, so there's a couple of things I need to do, right? So the first thing, we did talk about this in the comments, which is great, is I need to find research uh, locations, right? So right now you can see the only three I have is, well, the, really I only have one station. That's where all my scientists are. And of course, every spaceport, which is why I always say build a spaceport is in addition to other reasons. <clears throat> so my total research here, right, is 85 or 88, almost 88. And some of this is from scientists here. I think I have a scientist with, yeah, this is great, plus 4% research here. Always check to make sure no one's minus in that category because that's not a good thing. But 88 is really not good. Right? I'm not going to get very far very quickly. So I'm one of the things I'm researching, if I go to the research tree here, you'll see, well, it's right here, planetary exploration. I just finished exploration scanners. So these two are going to allow me, I think it's this one more specifically, 
Uh, but these two are important. They're tier two for exploration. They're going to allow my ships to find more stuff, including more research bases. And just by building more of them and having them go further and further out, so increasing my warp drive is also going to help with that. All right, so that's a big goal for us. I will be, I haven't decided when I'm going to do it because right now I'm going to rush this. Actually, I'm going to rush this. Although my money situation is not great, but I really want to rush this. And, oh, let me go back to research. I'm sorry. And then if I go down here, the other thing I want to do pretty quickly is this research labs. But when you only have one lab, it's not going to make a world of difference. It's better to have spend it, spent it here, in my opinion, on these exploration techs. I may do this storage tech too, because we're almost done with it. And that gives my ships a little more range with a better fuel cell. So I might do that. That's going to help with exploration as well. And then the last thing is we need to defend, right? So I put everything on chaotic and difficult and the AI has two to four colonies. And when I do meet them all, it's going to go pretty quickly, right? So I'm going to need to get patrol starships here. And another very, very interesting thing I'm excited about is I usually go with missiles or torpedoes. I love missiles. Um, they've since uh, made them better since, you know, upgrade since versions way before. Uh, I do want to increase my hyperdrive technology because that will spread out my, but that's tier three, a little difficult, but it's going to spread out my exploration ships better and find more research, right? It's all about research and money right now. And another thing, so back to weapons. I am not going, and I'm going to take this one very quickly too. That'll help defend better, but I'm not going to go my normal missile route because this race, the Akuro, have unique beam weapons and the beam weapons are intermediate to long range. Let me put up right on the screen here. I just put up a comparison of, I think this is tier five. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, way ahead of a little bit, but just to compare where I'm heading to, the tier five version of beam weapons called fusion weapons by the Akuro here have a lot of advantages, right? So if you see here, they have more damage, lesser range, and I'm again, I'm a really, I'm a range guy, so that's really against my play style here, but I'm going to play it. If you watch Das Tactics videos, he's awesome. I learned a ton from him uh, from other games uh, as well. And he just gives a great video series. And it's fun because we don't always agree on everything, which is great. But one of the things he does talk about, which I absolutely agree with, is play the game for a story, right? Like, don't try to max min. You'll see, I don't maximize my research in spaceports. I don't try to make the best mining bases. I use the default AI and... Uh, it's fine, right? Because I, I I know I can beat the game, although this is pretty challenging, this game. I don't want to max min everything. I want to kind of enjoy the game. I do max min my ships, and that's enough for me, right? And that's what I like. If you want to max min uh, bases, please go ahead and do so, right? I, I don't think resources is that big of a thing. In fact, I'd like it to be, even though in Aurora they did reduce it, uh, I'd like it to be even slower mining to make the game a little exciting. But I'm going to play against my normal play style. I'm going to play this race. And so that's going to be fun. So I'm going to play with these fusion projection and fusion weapons here because it's different and it's fun. And I'm going to tell a story. And if I lose, I lose, right? It's not about, you know, rushing to finish the game, right? So anyway, back to the comparison here. Uh, they do more bombardment. I guess that's to compensate because I can't build bombardment weapons. The armor bypass is plus 40%. I'm not a huge fan of armor bypass, uh, but it's, it's good. In other words, once the shields are down or, or if they have weak shields in the beginning and their shields fail 25% of the time, for example, right? 40% of this is going to just ignore the armor and go right to the hull and the systems in the hull. And that will quickly disable weapons and defenses for the ship. So it's not a terrible thing. It's good. But it does take away from your damage that you do to the armor normally, right? So if you're trying to wear the ship down. But in this case, I actually think it's pretty good. And, and it's 20% better than the Shatter Force Beam, which is the Tier 5 normal weapon for everybody else. And then the other great thing is this fire rate, right? So it fires every 9 seconds, and the normal Shatter Force Beam here fires only every 12 seconds. So that's a big difference, right? This 80 damage will be firing more often. The only problem is, of course, the range. Now, high damage is really important. That's why we say use large. This is a large fusion beam, by the way, right? So... Always use the largest weapon because shields have this thing called shield resistance. And if you watch my mechanics videos, you'll see me talk about this in detail. And they have these shield resistances, which, you know, as your weapons from the range, of course, this is going to degrade over range and things. As your damage gets lower and lower and lower, uh, you're going to do less and less damage. And that shield resistance will matter a lot. So anyway, I'm really excited about trying fusion beams, even though I never play with them. So... 
those are that's a quick overview of all my goals here, right? So I'm going to let the game go. I'm going to start at four times. I think some of you had a good comment. I was missing things at eight times, and I just wanted to get out of that initial stage because it is really, really boring. All right, and I really want to see this technology finish here. Let me unpause the game. As soon as that technology finishes, I'm going to build a bunch more exploration ships, okay? Now, notice my research here. Well, actually, I'm fine at 87. But there it goes, 84. You see, this plus 1,400 is just not enough, right? It's just not enough. By the way, talking about max minning, right, you can go in and tweak this, right? You can manually force uh, your empire to spend the money on research. Again, it's a part of the game that I just find tedious. And so it's like a handicap. It's like playing without spies. I just, I use the default AI. What I'm talking about here, let me just pause the game for a second. Uh, under empire and policy settings here, right? So you can go through here. See, so you can say funding levels. You can do this manually. And you can say, I know I'm taking a hit with money, but I want to spend it on research and population growth. And that's a little maxing, right? And it will work and it's good. And some people do and they have fun doing it. And I think that's awesome, right? I'm just not that interested in it. Uh, base construction too, not a bad idea to put this on automated here. Uh, I still do manual, it's just my instinct. But, you know, if you're playing and a little overwhelmed because the game is rather complex, that's a great setting to use. Uh, but I never want ship construction on auto. So anyway, I, so I have to watch this because I leave it on auto. I have to watch this very carefully and I need to try to make money. Oh, and one other thing about the text that I want to talk about too is if we go to terraforming technology, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but I'm so excited about this, uh, colonization, right? Normally, when you get to this tech, this tier three tech, you can build the terraforming facility, which improves the quality by 5%. That's a big deal. You make a lot of money by improving quality on two of, two of my systems here, and of course, it'll affect all of them, but I have to build this terraforming facility. It's very expensive, and it does drain your money. In fact, I'll probably will lose some, some research during that time period, but that 5% is awesome. However, the Akuru have a better version, right? This limited biome shaping facility. I think the only difference is the quality improvement, but one building here that costs less maintenance too, I believe the maintenance is less. Yeah, so it's less maintenance, still costs the same to build, but it's a 10% improvement. That's a huge difference. When I do that on both of these colonies, you're gonna see $5,000, $10,000 difference, 10,000 credits different. Uh, between what happened earlier. Uh, maybe it'll take a little bit of time, but a huge difference. So this, I'm really excited to get to this too. And because I'm a pacifist and I may not be able to, or at least I'm supposed to be a pacifist, and I may not be able to get to conquering more colonies than I'm used to, this will be super, super important, right? So I'm going to build what they call a tall empire, or at least that's the plan. So that's the other tech that I really want to focus on. But right now I need to find research stations or I'm not going to get any of this stuff. So, uh, and also because I've heard such terrible stories about this storyline here, that if we do colonize this, I think there's all kinds of problems. I may just leave this alone. It's also very difficult. If I go over to um, independent colonies here, right? I've got this minus 12 troubled by my strange, strange alien ways. So I don't know even if I'm going to have any luck with that. And my money's kind of tight. So I'm actually going to leave that independent alone for right now. So I'm just going to let the game run. I'm really hoping to get this to... 100% soon, and then I'm going to build a lot of exploration ships. Now, of course, you could build the exploration ships now and let them upgrade or retrofit themselves. I mean, that's, you know, it's fine. I just, I might as well wait. I think I have seven already, which isn't terrible at this point in the game, but I'm going to put some more as soon as this hits 100. And then hopefully, okay, great. They want a military refueling, so that's fine. That just means that they're going to, and we'll make a little money when they refuel with us and we can refuel up their base. See, I'm still getting bothered by these guys. Oh, I do have my cruiser now, though, so I may, uh, well, we'll see. I may build a small fleet. I just, right now, I have escort technology, and I really don't want to spend the maintenance cost for maintaining a, um, by maintaining a fleet. And really, all they're doing is raiding some of my outlying systems. I don't think they're going to come into my home again for a while. We'll see. If they do, my cruiser's sitting there, so that'll be interesting. All right. Other changes that I think I, well, I've mentioned in my mechanic videos is the fact that we can now support multiple hulls and the, the various mechanisms for dealing with fleets and design supports that. That's great. Diplomacy has changed. Reputation matters a lot more. So uh, certain races are going to look at my reputation. It's going to make a big difference for diplomacy. Not that I previously cared so much about diplomacy. I guess I do now as a pacifist. Uh, and bombardment has greater 
you know, creatures have less, I think, effect, and bombardment has a greater negative effect on your reputation. I'm not going to be bombarding a lot, so I don't think that's going to be a problem for me. But just some, just to mention some of the other Aurora changes, you know. But the game has come a long way, a long way, and certainly in stability, of course, and responsiveness. But even in some important gameplay things with fleets, that's just made it a lot more pleasant to play. It's still young, and I will say this. You know, with the with the love that I have for the game, and the developers are great. You know, and a, you know, to think of the, of a small, I always like these small teams and small developers producing something amazing like this. It has amazing potential, right? But the game's not great yet. It will be, right? I I totally believe that. But it's not great yet. And this is really how so many good games start, whether it be Stellaris or it be um, Crusader Kings, and you know, so many games where like you can't believe the difference three years, two years down the road compared to when it first came out, right? But it's great being a part of this early, and it's still very playable and very fun. Uh, but I think you'll see when we do playthroughs a year or two from now, it'll be a lot. It'll be a great game rather than a decent game. And because and because the mid and, and late game, uh, for me, is less exciting and bogs down a little bit. All right, here we go to 100. percent Okay, great. So I'm gonna go. Actually, I wouldn't even mind waiting for this, but uh, it's still a year away. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to rush this. Let's see what happens. I tend to do this, right? I, I tend to wait and wait and wait. And sometimes I get caught, particularly with the military, uh, and, I, and I end the game. Yeah, 4,000 not bad. All right, so I'm going to do this because that's also going to... Oh, actually, I don't really have to wait because this is... So just... I probably mentioned this in my mechanic videos, I'm sure, and if you don't know this. See, that says... Def oh, no, this is a different fuel cell. Okay, see the difference here. Okay. So that fuel cell is different from the name of a different fuel cell. So I really do want this one. I'm going to let it run to go to this next one. But you see the deflection field down there. If I was to build some ships now, like my exploration ships, when that deflection technology jumps to a version two, it will automatically upgrade all my ships. I don't have to worry about retrofitting something back to a base and rebuilding it. It's like a software change. And I, one of my readers gave me that idea, so I want to give them credit for that. I think it's a great uh, metaphor. So, but this top one, the fuel cells, it does make a difference, right? That's a different type of fuel cell. So I'd have to retrofit my ships. So I'm going to wait till this is here. By the way, I'm skipping messages again. I know you guys are going to be upset about it, but most of them, yeah, not super important. Really. Okay. But as soon as this hits 100, then I'm going to make more exploration ships. And you can see some of mine are already retrofitting, which is great here to the newer scanners, sensors, which is excellent. We need that. Almost there. Interesting, I haven't met any other any other AI yet, which is interesting. Usually I have by now, but I am in a corner here, kind of by myself, and I kind of like that. I'm going to kind of need that, actually. Okay, humans have found. I think we're going to be pretty friendly with humans. Wow, that's this is just too much good luck here, right? So, I mean, they're right in my territory here. They're very close. Yeah, this is going to be a really, really good start and really good for me to have a tall empire where I've got three colonies really close to each other. Okay, so before I even worry about these exploration ships, I'm going to go right here, immediately talk to them. And although my money is a little tight here, I'm going to send them a gift and I'm going to offer them a limited trade treaty. And there they go, 46%. By the next time I send a gift to them, they'll be at 100%, at least briefly, right? So I'm going to immediately invest in a colony ship. I don't care about the range. I don't care about waiting for this fuel. All right, 30 days we can wait, but you know, it doesn't really matter. It's not a long journey there, but I'll wait till this is here. Now, just for new players, you know, what's happening is because I have my ships on auto, right? In other words, every ship design is getting automatically created until I override it with a manual creation, which I haven't done yet, but I will. So the minute this goes over hundred percent, what's going to happen is, in fact, I can show you this here. So let's take a look at uh, my Starbase here, spaceport. I know I call it Starbase all the time in my videos, apologies. So let's go here to my spaceport and I'm gonna show you if I can build a CT, no, sorry, a CLN1 World Founder, right? So that's a version one World Founder. As soon as this upgrades, in theory, the AI is gonna make a CLN2, all right? And it's gonna have better fuel cells. It doesn't really matter for this, what I'm trying to do here, it's very close, but just to sort of illustrate that for you. And the same thing with my exploration ships. My, my exploration ships are on seven, so they're going to change to eight as soon as this goes to 100, or maybe it'll make a liar out of me, but I think that's what I want. 
right? So because all my ships, if I go over here to my design screen, right, you can see all these ships are on hull upgrade automatic, okay? And there it is, right? There's a CLN2 World Founder. It was CLN1 just five seconds ago, right? So it has already upgraded the ship with the better fuel cells, which is great. gives it a little extra range. Of course, I don't really care about that right now. I do care about my exploration ship here, which just went to EX8, okay? Now, when I do go to change, like this escort, if I, when I do go to make my own ships, I'm going to click this to manual, and then it won't upgrade it. It'll stay the way it is, and then I can manage those upgrades myself. But for most of these things, like I said, my play style, not everybody, I don't really, I'm not interested. It's too much minutia for me, and it's a little min-maxing. I really want to enjoy the story. I want to give myself a little bit of a challenge here. So I'm, I don't do anything to these ships. I let the AI handle it, and it's just nice for me. Okay? All right. So... I'm going to do two things. I'm going to build a colony ship. And I want to do this first because I don't want to miss this opportunity. I don't want to run out of resources or money. So I'm going to build that right away. Okay, there it is. And then I'm going to build uh, two, maybe two here, two EX-8 navigators, right? My exploration ships. But I'm going to go here to this system, and that's going to be the Balerian spaceport, right? So I'm going to go to this spaceport and build some here because I really want them to go from here to these stars, right? There's more expansion there. There's more places to go over here. Uh, and that's what I want to do. So I'm going to go to this spaceport. I'm going to build maybe four of them, maybe five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. All right. Uh, and I want to make sure I have enough constructor ships. I think I have, sorry, over here. I think I have, yeah, four is okay. See, I even have one not doing anything right this second. So let's give them stuff to do. Again, new players, you may want to automate this as I showed you in the menu, so you don't have to deal with this. These, these, right, these uh, little red lightning bolts means there's, you can send them there, but they probably will avoid it because there's danger in those places, right? And these are the, probably the pirates that are bothering me. So normally I would be able to get these resources and I can't yet. Uh, yeah, so actually there's nothing really exciting here to grab. Grab a couple of these just to keep them busy and it does make generate some money for me, which is why, by the way, my money has dropped a little bit is because I haven't been building these and the private economy hasn't been paying me for those. I'm going to check if there's any more research locations. There aren't. And I really need to start working on res resort bases, but I haven't gotten that technology yet. So we'll see. We'll see. We're going to revisit technology in a few minutes. All right, but I'm really excited to get this next colony, right? So I'm going to let this run. I'm going to keep an eye on my other two colonies here. You can see this Valerian is starting to generate better income, which is great, right? So it's going to be really fun. I actually have two races, right? Well, I have three when I grab the humans, but they're going to be almost as large as my race, particularly when this uh, colony takes off uh, soon enough. So I'm really playing a two race, really three race when I grab the humans playthrough here. Uh, but, and this is a great question for the group. So someone mentioned in my comments that I'm now going to get techs that Octarians get. This is this my new race here, but I don't think that's true. And if you look through, we will look through the research screen. You won't see Octarian unique technologies, right? Just the Akuro, just the ones I have here. But I'm happy to be wrong, so please mention in the comments. Okay. Now, by now my colony ship should be built. I'm gonna just go over here to colony ships. There it is, he's doing nothing even though he's on auto. If I say colonize this manually, it will do it, but then I gotta get the timing just right. And you saw what happened when I didn't have the timing just right. So I'm really gonna take my time here and I'm going to manually do everything so I'm, I've got it selected and I'm going to say grab some people all right now I think we're good see I remember before I said I don't want to load too many colonists but actually it's okay because we're good on continental planets not as good as forest but we're good on continental planets right so I'm going to let this load up with my race here uh, that's no problem for me Where normally I wouldn't. By the way, there's another retrofit. So, oh, the shields. No, I don't know why there's another retrofit. Oh, because this is... I don't know why I built version 1. That's so interesting. Anyway, you you watching the video may have noticed I clicked it too early, right? Probably. Okay, and there's deflectors. I don't really have to upgrade this, but it'll take three seconds, right? So I'm going to just show you how to do this. You just hit retrofit. It's going to find the nearest place to do that. It's actually going to do it here at the colony rather than the spaceport, which takes a little bit longer, not a lot probably already done already yep it's already done see now it's a CLN2 all right great so I'm gonna hit uh, delete to go back out to this view I'm gonna take that colony ship and bring it here but I'm not gonna colonize it because I want to catch the timing just right so I'm gonna just say go here 
and he's going to move there. And then as soon as I'm allowed to give them more gifts, I will do so, and I'll probably be at 100% colonization success, and bam, I've got myself three colonies. Okay, yeah, you probably noticed what happened here because I was talking. I ran out of research projects. You don't want to do that. I mean, it was maybe a minute, not a huge big deal, but let's go here and decide what I want to do next. So I'm hoping I'm going to find more research soon. So I'm going to do what I usually recommend and I usually do early. And that is, I'm going to go down here to uh, research, jump there. I'm going to grab research labs. Okay. And they're not that, ex you know, they're tier two, so it'll go relatively quickly. It will boost my one lab to have a little more research, but it's probably like 10 or 15%. That's not a terrible thing. I also really want this planetary governance. This is going to help me uh, generate money at my colonies, but I will be waiting on that. And let's see what else we want to do. Yeah, this basic space commerce, this just makes my spaceports have a little more trade bonus. So there's no reason not to do that. Uh, basic transport system. Yeah, so I'm going to need this because I do want to, I think that's all I need, believe it or not. Yeah, because I want to build resort bases, which do generate a little bit of bonus income. And even though it's not my main income, bonus income is great because then I can crash what I call, I call it rush a lot. You've heard me say rush, but... I can crash these technologies relatively consistently, which is almost like doubling your research, right? So uh, it's always good to have money. It's always good to have money. Okay, let's let it run. Back out to this view. I'm going to watch my colony ship get there. I, I'm not even going to bother paying the money, even if I can earlier than this, until that ship is literally hovering over the colony. Check my messages, which I'm big, I've been ignoring. Uh, somebody mentioned in the comments too, uh, use your ambassadors. I think that's a great idea. They will help you with pirates. They will help you with uh, independence. It's not going to stop anything from happening. It's not going to make a gigantic difference here. Uh, sometimes they have trade bonuses or espionage bonus, so that's a kind of good to have them there. But I don't really, it's not a huge difference here. I've got an admiral. That's interesting. There's no, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember I moved him, I moved him to manual and I put him on my cruiser. So I've got one ship cruiser and one admiral on that ship. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yep, they're still raiding, but look at the, but failed to obtain any loot. I'm not super, super worried about this. It just stops me from building uh, mining bases in this area because my constructors say, no way, we're not going in there. And that's that's hurting my development a little bit. Just if you didn't know this or if I didn't mention this earlier, right, you're trying to build up this development here. If you look at my colony, my home colony, you want to get this over 100%. It does, after 100%, it starts to lose, like, you know, you, you, the return on investment is not a big deal, but by bringing in all these different resources, right, you improve this and it generates more money. And that's a big, important thing. Money, money and, and research is really everything, okay? There's a great chart in my, if I don't mind say so myself, there's a great chart in my guide about how the economy works. And even though I understood it relatively well, just watching, you know, making that chart helped me understand it even better. So I highly recommend that so you can see what happens with the money. Okay, we're almost there. Yeah. See, I'm barely scraping a thousand extra here, right? So my research is probably, oh, we found one. Okay. All right. And so now this is a dilemma, right? I found a research. Not only did I find a research station, which is going to add, let's see, it's going to add 24 or more than that when I do the new tech here, right? So as soon as this tech is done, that's gonna do even more than 24. So that's gonna make a big difference. But not only that, it's a plus 10% all research. That is relatively rare. Plus 25% high tech, which is great too, but plus 10% all research is amazing, right? But the problem is there's something going on here, right? There's a threat going on here. So we can look at our threats here under uh, military ships. And yeah, there it is. And it'll tell you what it is, right? So this is a Gravelex. That's a very easy to kill but it was, and it was lasting five months ago. I guess I have no one there. Very easy to kill. Uh, space creature. Oh, but there's this thing too. Oh no, that might be. Oh, okay. So there's, there's some store. I don't know if it's a storyline or there's a, uh, just a random event here. This, I, I may get this automatically. None of have to even worry about this, right? But I need to send a ship there and my explorers are going to avoid this because there seems to be a creature here. So this is a great little uh, diversion here. So I'm going to take my one ship fleet i think he'll be able to handle it we'll see i don't know if not 
Uh, he'll he'll retreat, and then I'll build some more ships. But this is super important. Like, I can't delay this. So I'm going to send him and my illustrious Admiral Kozis, Kolisant, Urard, and we're going to send him here to kill any space creatures. And I'm also going to grab one of my explorer ships, probably one of my new ones. Yeah, I hate to steal him from something he's already doing here, but... Um, all right, I'll wait on that. I'll wait on that. But I'll grab one of my explorer ships to come check this out. I it, The ship, it's, my combat ship itself may set off whatever this is. But see, it's gray like this, right? It's abandoned. So it may like light up and shoot at us. I don't think that's the case here. It may need to be repaired by us. Uh, but it'll set off some kind of message when I get here. So let's let that happen. In the meantime, let's go back to my colonization effort. So my cruiser's going to head there from my home here. And then I want to... You know, either I want to get that base as soon as possible and get that 10% research, which is really important. Okay, but let's go back to my colony ship. He should almost be there. Very close. Right, you'll see, by the way, if you're ever watching here, you can see the speed, right? It's 183,000. You know, there, he's in system, right? As soon as he arrives uh, and the warp uh, engines turn off, he's at 51. You know he's there, right? And you can see the background image too. So double click here. And there he is. He's behind, I guess he's behind the system, but he's, he's, he's here. Okay, so we're good. So I'm going to pause the game, because remember how I messed this up last time. I'm going to click here. I'm going to talk to the independents. I'm going to speak to them, and I'm going to say, oh, I'm short of money. Oh, this might not be enough. Yeah, see, I don't have quite 30-something that I need. All right, so let me let it run just for a second. It's really close. I think it's 38,000 maybe. Oh, see. We just got raided. See, this is what killed me. So I say that the pirates don't matter, but look what happened. They just took 5,000 money from me by raiding one of my bases, and that set me back, right? So these guys are affecting my gameplay here. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a gamble here. I'm really going to regret it and take a little bit of a gamble here, and I'm going to just do the medium gift, and hopefully they'll free trade with me. I think, let's see. Oh, they're only plus six. Mm, that's a risk. All right. Well, I'll take that risk. Here we go. They're pleased. And nope. See, I didn't get the free trade agreement. So I wasted the money. <sighs> okay. So see, my crit, my colony success chance is only 20%. Had I done the highest one and then they would have taken the free trade agreement, this would have gone to 100% and I would have been great. But it's not going to happen. So now I got to wait till this thing goes up and I have to wait a year. So my colony ship's just going to sit there. And I screwed up again a second time, so not my best gameplay here. But that's okay, right? We'll let it happen. But good lesson for everybody else watching. All right, let's see as soon as he gets here. There's my one cruiser. Oh, he's low on fuel already. I could have probably stopped at my other colony and refueled. Would have been really smart. You can see, and these, these ships that you get from the, you know, that you find, they're always lower in fuel capacity than the generic ships at whatever tier you're at. And so that's really a pain in the neck. I wish they would change that because they're, these ships can't really stay with your fleets and do things a lot. I mean, this is a one-off mission here. It's not terrible. I'm going to double-click here in this area and jump to my ship. And the game's going to crash. Okay, well, okay, we're back. And uh, my game had actually had crashed. Uh, and I don't want to blame the game because... I did install some mods, and uh, actually the one mod that I installed is called Blackness, and if I go hit delete here, it takes away the background image of the galaxy, so it's much easier to see my nebulas, you can see the boundaries here, and it just makes it a cleaner look for me, and I really, I really like it. There's a couple of other great mods that I've been uh, playing around with, there's a mod called XL, which changes a lot of the gameplay. Unfortunately, I don't love all of the changes, but there's some really cool changes. For example, it makes a big, a much bigger difference in the warp drives that you research. So fast drives, <clears throat> which have quicker initiation times, are drastically different, but have uh, a much more drastic lower range. So it makes your decisions about which path to go down on some of the research trees uh, a lot more interesting. So I love a lot of things about it, but I don't like everything about it. So uh, I'm going to let that mature a little bit, maybe come back to look at it again in the future. But it's a great mod to check out right now. So the only mod I have is this blackness mod, which again is a visual mod, but that may have been why the game crashed. So we're just trying to give the game a little credit here. It doesn't crash very often. 
and my auto saves usually uh, protect me pretty well. So uh, where we left off was I had just sent my fleet right here. And while the, while I was reloading it, they arrived and I really want to kill this space creature here so I can investigate this spaceport. Okay. And one of the cool things I also want to show you is the, the new view that Aurora offers here. This is called freeform, right? So before you could <clears throat> high angle, low angle, which is kind of tail the uh, ship, which is cool. Follow the um, bridge camera, which is also pretty cool. But I like this free form, this new view from Aurora, which basically just lets me go in any angle here, see? And I can zoom in and watch the battle from here, which is really cool. Yeah, there's the creature right there, right? Yeah. So let's see what happens. Let's game run a little bit. I'll put it to uh, half speed. Well, we'll go to normal speed. Okay, so here we go. It's going to be a quick combat. A little broadside view there. Okay, and the creature's dead. Oh, no, I thought it was. There it goes. Okay. So anyway, that view is pretty cool. I'm going to go back to the default view. That's something new with Aurora. One of the other things I did want to mention when I was back here was, you know, some something the game just is not very polished about, and that is the colors of the empires. And you'll see this better when you see the other AI empires. I'm sure if you played the game, you've seen this. And the borders here, right? So like in Stellaris, there's a really nice defined border. Uh, and, you know, that's what the game's all about, right? Building empires. So I really think that could, and I, a lot of people have made comments about this, that the game could really use a lot of polish here for making it a little more easier to see and fun. Okay. Oh, yeah, my game's still running. Let's just give me a pause here. So, oh, one of the other changes of Aurora, which was really cool, and you'll see what happens. So if you go back to my ship here, my one cruise that I have, and if you look at the weapons here, I think it was firing missiles earlier. It has a medium starfighter bait, right? But if you look here on the information card, you'll see there's zero interceptors, zero bombers. And that's because relatively recently, and I, I don't know when exactly, they made it so that if you don't have any technology for fighters, and I don't, right? I haven't researched many combat techs at all. Even though the ship you found, right? This is a derelict ship that I repaired, has a medium... Starfighter Bay, you can't build the Starfighters, okay? And so it, it'll be, that part will be useless. So it's probably a tech I want to take pretty early. It'll make this ship a lot stronger or fairly stronger by adding fighters to it. So that's probably the next fact. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go to tech. And fighters are pretty cheap early fighters. Let's see. Let's jump around here. Yeah, fight. Okay, Starfighters tier two. Yeah, so I'll take that next, and that will give this ship a little more combat ability, which will be great. Oh, and I can't build it because I haven't built um, basic ship maneuvering first. Okay, that's so it's going to be cost me two techs to do that. All right, good. So anyway, I'll get Starfighters, and that will make this cruiser a little more combat ready. All right. Now, uh, one of the other things I'm going to do is try to see where this goes. Now, this is probably a bad decision. It's probably better to do this with an exploration ship, but I'm going to take a risk anyway. I'm right here. I don't know if there's an exploration ship nearby. So I'm going to move my cruiser to this spaceport. And most likely what's going to happen is there's going to be some kind of message that will come up that right, it'll, it'll initiate the uh, choice I'll have to make or I'll have to repair it or it'll turn hostile. That's a possibility too. And then I have to defeat it. So, and I don't remember which one this is. And I'm kind of glad I don't, you know, to make this story kind of fun and not think too much about it. So I'm going to send my ship here, which is probably a bad move. But let's take a look and see what happens. So as it gets closer, it should. I'll turn the speed up a little bit. It should set off the, should initiate the event, right? And the event's going to generate a message for us. And I'll stop and pause the game. We can read it and see what happens. Yeah, it's going to eight times here to speed it up. You can see the debris field here, which our ships will pick the stuff up and get some technology from that too. All right. Okay, so bad idea. And you can actually still see my ship here, right? So because, all right, so what happened is we lost contact with our ship and that was our only combat ship and our Admiral must be gone too. Let's take a look at what happened to the Admiral. Uh, here he is. So you can see imprisoned by independent location unknown. So 
we lost contact with our ship. <clears throat> Just prior to losing contact, they sent a message saying they discovered a very alien looking base. We should investigate this. So now I have to send explorer ship here and I've most likely lost my ship, although you can still see it's here. So it's possible the base is taking control of it, but they've imprisoned my admiral and we'll need to see what happens. So I'm going to zoom out and see if I have any exploration ships in the system, if not in the area. Nope. So I'll zoom out even further. I'm going to hit my exploration key here. So a nice little feature here. If you click on exploration here, it will show you where they all are or are targeted to go to, right? So all these circles. And if, in fact, if you hover over the ship in the list here, it will tell you where they are, right? So there's actually a fair amount of close ones here to where I'm going to. So I'm going to grab this ship, which is retrofitting. And yeah, I'm going to send him back that way. Don't think it's going to matter that he's not retrofitted as far as interacting with this space station that I found, the spaceport. But yeah, so I'm going to just turn him around. I'm going to manually take control of him. Uh, yeah, it's right over here. He's very close. So I'm going to send him here and we'll see what happens. I'll just have him move there. It'll set off the event, if anything. Now, he's on manual, so I'll switch him to auto right away. And so he'll do my first mission. He'll move here. This will set off the event. And then when he's done, he'll start automate automatically, probably retrofitting and then coming back and doing more exploration. All right, so let's let that go. I'll go rather fast here. All right, another thing I like to do, by the way, is... I like to have at least one mining station in every system because if the AI starts to get close and they start putting stations here, right, it might creep into their boundary of their empire, right? So, I, but although I think this is already in my empire. But anyway, just to be safe, I like to build a mining station. There is something here to get out of it, polymers. But even if there's very little to get out of here, I'm going to build a mining station just because I like to have at least one in each system and that will allow me to either negotiate with the AI to take, you know, to buy some stations for them or at least allow me to build other stations here. Again, if I get control of the spaceport, it'll be even better. All right, so let's let this run. I'm almost up to the new research labs. That's great. That's going to help my research because right now I'm still stuck at 94. Oh, and this happened too, right as I, right as the game quit. So let me just mention this. So there is a research base here. Let me see where it is. So if I go to delete here, it is in my home system. See it? So again, that new tech, I'm going to double click here and jump to it. So that new, you can see my capital is here. So by going to that tier two exploration had a, allowed me to discover this research bonus, right? That I wouldn't have seen otherwise. So that's why it's so important to get those Sensor technology is up higher, okay? And so I'm going to click build a research station. Now, my, I only have, I think I said four or five of these ships, and they're all doing something. Actually, these guys are not doing anything, but I want to build another one anyway. I think we're a little low here. So I'm going to go to my home space port here. I'm going to build a constructor ship. I'm going to double click on it, and I'm going to set it automatically here to build research station. So as soon as it pops out of here, it's going to build that research station. The only problem is if I leave it here, when it's done, it's just going to sit there and not do other things, right? Or the way I would like this to work is that you set this as its priority, but as soon as it's done and there are no research stations to be built, it would then go off and do these other things, right? So I think that would be a much better implementation of this. Or it's possible it does work that way and I'm not aware of it. That may be a new change to Aurora I'm not familiar with. That would be great, but I don't think so. I think that once he goes and builds that research station, he'll just have no mission after that. And the fact that these guys have no missions mean I, means I haven't been here before. Again, not a bad idea to automate base building so you don't have to deal with this. It's just one of those areas I like to micromanage. So I'm going to click on a lot of these things I've been neglecting. It's very important that you have these going. It's very important that you don't have your constructor ships doing nothing here because when they build these, it generates income for you, right? And it also, of course, the more of these, the more of these colony development or colony income bonuses you get in your, uh, you know, to your colonies, it, it makes their development get higher and you generate more money. So 
all these things super important. And then lastly here, right, these cast loan sources aren't going to generate really much more money for me, a little bit. But more importantly, it's going to put, and let's go to delete and go back here, it's going to put refueling places at the edge of my empire, right? So as I go out further and further, or if I want to do a combat mission later at the edge of my empire, it's good to have these scattered all around so I can go someplace uh, quickly and find fuel on my way to doing a mission. And just in general, that it does burn off very quickly, particularly when your empire gets bigger. So it's important to take them all. I think that was the only other one I could find. But yeah, so sometimes I scan through here. Again, another trick, as I mentioned earlier, hide this so there's no asteroids. And then quickly look down and you'll see, I don't see any more that aren't under uh, dangerous areas, right? So these two are, are fine, but I've got to destroy those pirates before I can really work over in these sections here. Okay. So I think where we want to go now that we've taken care of all that, that'll build a new research station. So I will gain, right, one more research station here. And we got to see what happens to that event. I may get a fifth station, which would be great. And as soon as this crosses to 100 here for research lab technology, these will all go up a little bit. I think these will go to 20 at the spaceports, and this will go to 30-something, I think. I don't remember. But it's going to make a pretty drastic difference. We'll get up into the 100s here research, maybe even double my research, which is great. Okay, but let's see what happens. We're about to have my exploration ship, if you remember, uh, arrive here. It's just about here. Let me slow things down a little bit. Maybe two times speed. And hopefully that'll set off a message here. Maybe we get the base. Maybe it activates to be hostile. Maybe we get our ship back, which is hovering here somewhere. I don't see it right now. All right, a little closer and we'll be there. So again, just for some cool views, right? If you want to, we can go to the bridge view. So this is what it looks like. And if he's going to get destroyed, it'll be kind of fun to watch that happen. So let's let it go. We're getting closer and closer. This derelict station. There's all the debris. Pretty interesting, right? Pretty cool. Okay, here it is. Bannon based encountered. Good. Heavily damaged. However, we could acquire it by sending a construction ship to repair it. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to hit investigate here. And it just sends the same message back. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. That sounds like a bug to me, but good. We've investigated. Okay, so when we get the base, after we rebuild it with a constructor ship, maybe we get our other combat ship back. That would be great. Maybe we get our admiral back. That'll be very interesting. Uh, I'm not really sure. Okay, I'm going to go back to the default view here. My overhead view. And what I want to do right from here, and I'll just show you how to do this because it's kind of convenient, rather than going back to all my other views, right? I'm just going to go here to my construction yards. Remember, Balerian is much, much closer. This is very close to the northeastern end of my empire, if that was really northeast. And I'm going to build a constructor ship there. Oh, except I'm out of money. Okay, so i got to let the game run a little bit. I need 2800 yeah, see, these pirates are killing me when they're stealing this money. Come on, 2,800. Let me speed it up a little bit. And by the way, even if you pause it, it will still keep running, and you might not catch the money that you need here. All right, if I don't get here, I'll set another... Okay, no, see, I missed it. All right. So I just need about $2,800, guys. Let's go... Missed it again. See, the game keeps running after you pause it for a little bit. All right, well, there's a new construction ship, but hopefully that one is the one that's going to be building the research base. Okay, there's 8,000. Okay, pause the game. All right, great. So I've got, by the way, this does not update live, so you've got to come out of here if that's if you're wondering what why that happened. <clears throat> I'm going to build a new construction ship. So this is being built at the Balerian Spaceport, which is just a little bit, south of here. It's much, much closer than my home spaceport. And then as this is building, right, I can double click this to select the ship, even if it's as it's building here. I'm going to let it run. And then I'm going to assign it manually to work on this. It might have done it anyway, but I want to manually do that. So as soon as it gets to 100%, it will allow me to assign the mission. It will go to manual. And then I'll just set it to auto so that when it's done working on this, it will come back and start doing normal stuff like building mining bases. I'm 
just about to cross the research lab technology here. That's going to be a big plus for us. Let me go back here and look at that. Yeah, so that's good. those are all upgrade automat up retrofit automatically to the better research labs. Uh, yep. Let's see what happens. So I'm at 95. We're just waiting to see what happens as I cross this threshold. Okay. Well, let me pause the game anyway. So. This construction ship is ready. It's leaving the construction yard, but before it can automatically pick its next target, which could be this, I don't know, but I'm going to make sure that it is. So I'm going to right-click complete construction of the abandoned base. So right-click hold, by the way, <clears throat> and there it goes, right? So it's going to build the Len Lentar 2 spaceport, which is this. It's on manual, but I'm going to switch it to auto because it's going to finish this mission before it goes back to auto. Uh, let's let that run, and it should show up here. And we'll get the spaceport, which will give me, if you remember, plus 10. Let's see where. Oh, it's this. Yeah, this planet here. So it's going to be plus 10% all research, which is crazy good. Really, really important. As well as it's going to give me re just research because it's a research base, right? So I'll have these four research bases here, or actually five, when that other construction ship builds what we asked it to build. Let's double check that, by the way. Let's go to my construction ships and make sure one of them is building a research base. Yep, right here. So Futile Princess is building that research base back in my home system here. Now, by the way, this is a convenient time because it's already doing it. I don't have to worry about this. It's a convenient time to say, okay, stop being automatic for that and just fully automate. So when it's done here, it'll start building mines and I don't have to worry about it just sitting there doing nothing. And of course, same thing with this ship here, which have arrived or is about to arrive yep there she is okay it should go pretty quick i'm dying to see what happens here if that's i saw my ship here and now it looks like it's gone uh that's kind of weird so we'll have to see what happens there all right i think this is a good place to stop for this episode so let me just recap what's happening I'm going to get these new research. My research should, right now it's at uh, 112. It should go up significantly when I get this one and when it finishes the one in my home system. Oh, there, uh, no, that's not it, right? Yeah. So there'll be a, a fourth one here and then a fifth one from this. So that's going to be a nice big boost to my research. That was a big goal of mine. Remember, if I zoom out here, I do want to get back to getting these humans. I just don't have enough money, right? And I may not be able to get the, here are the humans here. I may have to focus more importantly, right, on getting rid of these pirates, which are just robbing me of money at every turn. So it's a big decision. It's going to be a little bit of work. I'm going to have to try to build up some military technologies, build up a small ship, a fleet of frigates. And with this cruiser, if I ever get it back, that's a big if, uh, come back and take this uh, pirate base, and then I'll have some time to expand, hopefully before I meet some AI enemies. And that's, that's plenty to do. I got a lot to do. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed it so I can uh, keep making videos. And we'll talk to you soon. Good hunting.